I stumbled upon this ThinkPad T460S on eBay for just 75 euros. And at first glance, it looked like a steal. Maxed out RAM, a 500GB SSD, and the seller even claimed the battery was in good condition. But there was a small detail in the description BIOS password locked. Now, most people will scroll right past that listing, but me, I thought I can fix that easily. But how could I be so sure? Well, I've already unlocked a BIOS lock ThinkPad before, and I figured I could use the same method here. So today, we're going to see if this little ThinkPad can be brought back to life or if I just wasted my 75 bucks. Let's take a look. So mine came with a 6th gen Intel i5, 20GB of DDR4 RAM and a 500GB SSD which already had Windows 11 on it. Physically it's in pretty good shape for its age, a few minor scratches here and there but nothing out of the ordinary. Honestly, if I can manage to fix this BIOS issue, I think I've gotten a really solid laptop for just 75 euros. The laptop actually boots into Windows 11 perfectly fine, but as expected, I can't access the BIOS at all. So yeah, it runs, but it's kind of locked in Windows 11 right now. Let's see if we can change that. So to fix the BIOS lock, I'll be using one of these, the CH341A programmer. Basically this little tool can read and write BIOS strips directly, which means I can in theory back up the existing firmware, wipe the password and then flash it back onto the chip. Reading and writing the chip is actually the easy part. The tricky part is figuring out how to remove the password from that firmware file. And that is where something called a BIOS patcher comes in. The patcher analyzes the dumped BIOS file, removes or bypasses the password section and then gives you a clean version back that you can then use to flash the chip. Sounds simple enough, but if anything goes wrong here, I could easily break the laptop. So first I had to connect the CH341A to the BIOS chip. A quick search online showed me exactly where the chip was located on the motherboard. It's a tiny little 8 pin chip, usually near the RAM or CPU area. In addition to the programmer itself, I also needed a software that can communicate with it and read or write the chip. For this I used a program called AS Programmer. Now before patching the firmware, I wanted to make sure that everything was working correctly. So I read the BIOS chip twice and saved both firmware dumps. Then I compared the two files to make sure they were identical. That way I knew the firmware I dumped was actually correct and if anything went wrong later, I'd have a backup ready to restore. Plus I'd needed that original firmware later anyway, because once the laptop boots successfully with the patched file, I'll have to flash the original BIOS back for the laptop to work correctly. With the firmware safely backed up, it was time for the fun part, removing the BIOS password. For that, I use the patch tool that analyzes the dumped BIOS file and removes the security lock. The process itself was pretty straightforward. And once that was done, I fired up AS Programmer again and started flashing the patched BIOS back onto the chip. This part always feels a bit tense because if the connection slips or the flash fails halfway through, that's pretty much game over for the motherboard. But luckily, everything went smoothly. The program finished writing and the chip looked good to go. Now the only thing left to do now is to power up the laptop and to see if it actually worked. When patched firmware is loaded, it usually prompts you to set a new random BIOS password. That's completely normal. What I should have done after was to flash the original firmware back onto the chip. Because if I don't do that step, the laptop will be always asking me for a password. And of course I didn't do that at first. So I was just sitting there thinking, why is it still locked? But after finally doing it the correct way, things still didn't go as planned. The laptop powered on, but the screen stayed completely black. I tried the same process again, but this time it didn't even boot. Instead, the power button LED blinked 3 times, which usually means there's a system fault. And at this point, I generally thought I'd break the BIOS. But luckily, after flashing the original firmware back onto the laptop, the laptop booted perfectly fine, but the thing was that the password was still there. I retried the patching process several more times, but the results were always the same, either a black screen or a blinking power light. And at this point I was just thinking like what could be the issue for the laptop not working correctly. The firmware was perfectly fine, the patch file was perfectly fine, so I didn't really know what else could have been the issue. I almost gave up, but then I've decided to try it one more time, but this time with different settings. I made it so that before flashing, it first deletes all the existing content on the BIOS chip. So I finally managed to bypass the BIOS. As you can see, I can enter the BIOS completely fine, change the settings whatsoever. And that was because I missed this specific setting here, um, which is probably in the video as well. Let me know if y'all want a simple, in-depth tutorial of how I did it. And yeah, I kind of already explained it, but um, yeah, if you want, I can make a full in-depth tutorial on this whole thing. The software is needed and all the steps I made, but in-depth. I've even managed to get a dual system up and running 
that is with Windows and Linux. So let me know if you want a video to that as well.